Last Dead End, released on consoles December 23rd, 2020 by Jandu Soft. I'm a bit confused with this title for several reasons though, as I've seen the Steam version, which was released in May of 2018, and it seems to be the better version of a really bad game, and has a different developer. I never start my reviews off like this, but The Last Dead End seems to be all over the place in many ways. Thanks to the publisher for the review key. The story of The Last Dead End is an incoherent mess and hard for me to explain because although I played this game through to the end, I still have very limited understanding of what I just played through. The story is supposed to be something like this. You're a scientist named Farhad Norfruzov, who's gone back to his homeland to assist in the filming of a documentary. While there, some very odd things begin to happen in connection with an ancient religion called Zoroastrianism, which is an actual religion. It's an ancient pre-Islamic Persian religion from Iran. As you go through the game, you'll be able to decipher certain writings on the walls, which also serves as insight into this religion and its culture. So, should you have an interest in ancient religions and cultures, there's that. But I didn't really get this information from playing the game. I got it from the press kit. In-game, the story isn't nearly as coherent. It feels very random and thrown together, actually. Your father has rushed into our house and yelled at me. You are a pauper. Stop dating my daughter. At one point, it seemed there was also some relationship drama between the protagonist and the lead female character, but that also fell flat and felt tacked on. None of this made any sense to me for several reasons. The overall delivery was just poor. Oh, why haven't you told that my father has insulted you? And I felt so sorry for him, and even have agreed to marry for the sake of him. Where the visuals are concerned, The Last Dead End has at first glance what I'd like to call some nice last-gen PS2 graphics. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because if I can call a retro-styled pixel art game beautiful, then I can say the same thing about a dated PS2 looking title. And when I say last-gen PS2 graphics, I mean if you played an emulated PS2 game in high res, so it does look nice for what it is. I hate that word though, as it is so vague and juvenile, but that's the best way I can describe it. Nice. There are some areas, particularly the night sections, where the lighting does look really good. I did notice textures loading and that happens quite often. So I guess we're playing a game of one step forward, two steps back with the visuals. Because some of the animations are also janky as hell. And there are also glitches galore. Even in the end credits, I'm going to have to assume this huge white box at the top is also a design flaw. If it's not, and it's an actual design choice, well, I don't know what to say about that. There are also these unskippable death scenes after you lose to a boss. They're quite ugly and should be indeed skippable. <laughs> They're nothing fancy as the ones we saw in Arkham games, and even those got old after a while. You're able to play from a third person or first person perspective. This game is basically split in two parts. The action sections where you enter a different dimension which is in first person and the exploration sections with some incredibly simple puzzles which is done in third. The sword symbolizes fight. The audio is ho-hum at best. The score is below average and does very little to inspire and it actually gets a bit annoying as every time an enemy approaches you're treated with this foreboding music which is fine the first couple of times but then it gets a bit annoying. And in hindsight, perhaps the reason for my annoyance with these tracks is the actual gameplay, as I do know what's gonna go down every time an enemy attacks me. I'll get back to that in a few. I see. It is a pity. There is voice acting here, and as with most my indie reviews, I like to express my gratitude to the devs for their efforts, no matter how mediocre it is, as I do prefer any kind of voice acting over text only. But here's the thing, the voice acting isn't just horrendous, but there are also many grammatical inconsistencies in both the voice acting and the text. If you are going to the ruins, then take a flashlight with yourself. It's dark there. And both voice and text are always saying two different things, sometimes completely different things. And there are many times when the characters are talking and I have literally no idea what they're on about. There was a surprising image of the sky. It turns out that I am, as the, gu as the guard, protecting the maiden, or a maiden tower, from an angry dragon. And this is why the story was so incoherent to me. It was almost like they were speaking a different language, although they weren't. Of 100% of the story, I can safely say I understood maybe 10 or 15% of what was going on. And this is because it was so poorly communicated. Damn, seriously? Let's talk gameplay. There's so much to say here. You see, the way I see it, 
based on the current review culture, most reviewers will get a game like this, and based on the quality of the game, they play maybe an hour of it and then get to telling viewers how awful it is. But I really do try to give each indie game a fair shake. I play this game to the end seeking redeeming qualities. At one point I was sure I was doing something wrong. I saw videos of the Steam version and it honestly looked like a different game. It kinda looks like the complete version of this one. Yes, the last dead end on the Xbox One feels incredibly incomplete. In some of those Steam videos I saw several guns being used. Here, I got only one. And if there's a way to select or retrieve more guns, I have no idea how to do this. Let me break this down for you. The controls are so bad. Like I said, you have one gun, it takes forever to reload. Although one could argue that reloading a gun in real life is nothing like Call of Duty, but it feels so slow. And after you reload, there's this one second pause before you can fire a shot. It's either a pause or an input lag. As I stumbled across other examples of input lag, I found that I have to press buttons twice for certain actions, like pausing the game. So it's either a one second pause between reloading or you have to press the reload button twice. I'm not quite certain if that counts as input lag, as I know input lag is when there's a pause after you press a button, but it feels like that's an apt description for this issue. And on the subject of controls, there are no controller options, nothing to show the controller layout, so I basically had to guess my way through the buttons. It took me a while to figure out that the character could actually sprint. And this is what I alluded to earlier regarding combat. Encounters are a complete mess. There are a handful of enemies you will encounter, and by handful, I do not mean you'll only see a few of them. I mean, it's the same as zombie bird snake combination for most of the game. Sometimes you'll see some random thing pop up and do absolutely nothing. But for most parts, it's the same silly enemy types. And when they do pop up, there's very little you can do, as combat is relegated to a circus act. Hit detection is so poor, I'm going to have to assume it's random. You just flail about and hope you hit something. It doesn't even have to be within striking range. And every time you do make contact, it's the same blood splatter animation used. I'd say this is another game where the melee weapons are more powerful than your firearm, but that also feels random. Sometimes the gun takes them down relatively quickly, and other times the axe works better. There was even this part where nothing was helping. They just wouldn't die, period. Again, I saw no way to get more weapons, like I saw on Steam, and there was even this one time I beat a boss and afterwards I had a sword. I don't know where it came from, but it was in my hand. I switched over to my gun, came back, and this mysterious sword was nowhere to be found. It wasn't until this area where this guy gave it back to me that I saw it again. Let's talk the bosses. The bosses themselves weren't really that bad, but we go back to your character. He's as lame as a three-legged dog. He can barely do anything to help himself. So although each boss is pretty easy to take down in theory, as sometimes they'll just sit in place while you go to town on them, Farhad is so incompetent. You may find yourself throwing your controller away out of frustration. I assure you, if I wasn't reviewing this game, I would have stopped playing it after the first half hour. In the first 15 minutes or so, one may think there's hope for this game. In the same way I saw the trailer and thought it couldn't be that bad, but it is. I had to use cheap tactics to defeat each boss, and it just made me feel dirty by the time the credits rolled. There were also some quick time sections. I'm not one of those who hates QTEs, and these were okay at best. The sections where you're exploring among other things makes me think the developers are not accustomed to developing video games, and I know Jandusoft is a competent development team. But this doesn't even look or feel like a Jandusoft game, and the confusion with the Steam version combined with this fact still leaves me scratching my head. You know how at the start of games we see the developer and publisher's logos? Well, I saw nothing here. A bit odd. What the hell? In the third person sections, when you're exploring, it really just feels like busy work. Its inclusion almost feels random. I understand that the devs are playing with the whole alternate dimension thing, and that is fine, but it still feels tacked on and lifeless, with what also feels like forced exploration for the sake of saying, hey, we have some exploration sections in here. What is going on? The overall design of this game feels so unfinished. 
like not one single component of this game was seen to completion. Don't get me started on the level designs and these invisible walls. The sections in the game where you receive new entries to your encyclopedia also feels pointless. There is nothing about this game that would encourage me to read up on these things not simply because I have no interest in the lore or culture, but because they have no real impact on the actual gameplay itself. They feel like irrelevant side notes, and you can pick up various items and analyze them, but unless you are really interested in the culture this game represents, I don't see the point of this, as it has no effect on the actual story progression. There's also a survival mode, and to this, the first question that came to mind was, why? Why would I want to play a mode that has the same lame creatures coming at me, and I basically have no effective way of defending myself against them? And for some reason, the frame rate completely tanks in this mode. I'm going to have to go ahead and say the only truly redeeming factors this game has are its duration and difficulty level. It's quite short, and aside from the terrible gameplay mechanics, with a bit of patience, it's also easy. It really pains me to be ripping to shred someone's indie game. But come on man, what the hell is this? Why was this released in such an unfinished state? Was the game rushed out and tacked together for consoles? As although the PC version doesn't look that great either, it does at least look like a complete game. This? This feels like an early alpha build that left the oven way too early. I have to call a spade a spade. I can't in good conscience recommend a game like this. Maybe with one really huge patch, or a couple dozen small ones, it may be playable and who knows, based on the mostly positive reviews it got on Steam, it just might be enjoyable. But as it stands, I give this seeming pile a thumbs down. I see. It is a pity. AAA games are all well and good, but many times, if you'd like a truly unique experience, one off the beaten path, then the indie scene is where you want to be. Show your support for independent game developers. Most if not all indie games are priced relatively low, some are even free with the option to donate, so there's really no reason to pass. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell. If I pissed you off though, then we all know where to find the various hate buttons, don't we? Either way, I won't hold it against you. Our game is never over. Alright, farewell.